Right on writers and welcome first time viewers to the Books by Adrian Author platform. This is Typewriters Podcast, a sort of after show to the live stream Sunday of the week. Today's guest is our guest from the episode this last Sunday, Moshe Mikonovsky. For you guys, it's been about five days. For us, we just wrapped up the broadcast and we're going to uh, uh, debrief a little bit. For all of you here uh, watching this on Thursday, thank you so much for being here. Like, comment, subscribe on the YouTube um, channel and uh, show your support that way. It's the easiest way to, to help us out. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to the audio only versions, please leave a five star review. You can say anything you want to me in that review. I, I'm not going to hold you to anything specifically except for the five star rating. You're only allowed to put a five star rating if you want to comment on my if you want to review my podcast that's the rule all right you guys let's go ahead and bring him back on out here our guest and friend moshe mikonovsky hey buddy hello how are you i'm good i'm good so uh we just wrapped up the show yes i thought it went rather well i thought you were a natural how, how, how did it go thank you yeah i i enjoyed it really i loved it, it was fun. um also very organized so i love that uh you know that I, I know what you're going to uh, uh, the, the stages of everything, so that was great. Uh, great questions from the audience. I, I love they to see their participation. Today. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Had good questions. So, no, no I, complaints. I, I love it. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I try very hard to be organized like that for the guests. I try to make it so that all you got to do is show up, and and that's it. Like you don't have to do anything. <laughs> else. Uh, so you know, and. A lot of people on AuthorTube or YouTube in general, they, you know, they schedule a live stream, they do it and it's over. And with me, I schedule them like four months in advance <laughs> and I like, because I, it's a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm making animations, I'm writing outlines yeah, for yeah. interviews. I'm doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so like, you know, it's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work to put a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when you're trying mm -hmm. to build a brand, you know, build the whole audience for your readership so that when your book comes out, they're there to read it. Yep. You're putting just as much time into the channel as you are into the writing and everything takes that much longer as a yes. result, right? <laughs> like yeah. we're just busy yeah. all the time now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I almost forgot that we still had a few questions left in the outline. So I'm going to open it back up. I was mm -hmm. dumb enough to close it. All right, here we go. So we're going to dive back into some questions that we cut out for time. Uh, I was going to ask your writing process what's it like on a novel sounds mm -hmm. to me like you're a bit of a pantser uh do you do you plan ahead do you plot ahead we've mentioned you know getting critique throughout different stages so what's your process like for writing a novel yeah i i don't plan ahead at all so <laughs> yes um i even with this one i had the nugget of an idea in my head when i sat down to write it and I had no idea where it will go, but I was like, okay, that's the idea. Just I following that thread. <laughs> just following that thread, exactly. Yeah. I knew that um, uh, there are things, uh, you know, from my, my life experience that I can write. So about uh, my background, where I'm from and things like that. And then from that, it brought up other things that I didn't think about. And then uh, what, what usually happens to me when I do that is new ideas will come up. And then we'll, they will always come up in the wrong time. So I had this file on my phone that I always add those ideas whenever they come up. So if I'm driving, I will like leave myself, call myself or leave myself an audio message. If I, um, you know, in bed, just before I fall asleep, I make myself wake up and, and write it in my, on my phone. Um, if I'm in the shower, so right after the shower, I'll write it down because otherwise I will forget about it. Yeah. And then when I have those ideas, um, then I can develop them to something a bit more. Yeah. Um, and, and that's usually where if I don't have any idea, that's I, where I might get stuck. Yeah, I can't imagine uh, being a, a, a kind of full on pantser like that, though, where, where you're you're writing the book and you don't know where it's headed. I always have to plot everything out. Mm -hmm. um, flash fiction has become very popular, especially on, on YouTube, you know, tight little short stories and mm. uh and i even plot those out like i have outlines for flash fiction it's ridiculous <laughs> i can't do anything unless i have like a structure and i'm like oh, okay that's how it ends i will get uh -huh. there this way you know <laughs> but you know that's to, to, everybody does it different everybody does it yeah different. absolutely 
Do you feel like you're going to continue with New Degree Press uh, for your future books, or are you going to mm -hmm. go fully independent? What, how do you see your future books being published? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I mean, w on one hand, um, I think it was a great program. It um, I was able to break even at the end, so you know because I did the pre-sale. But I'm really dreading that pre-sale if I have to do it again. So I don't know if I. I think it will be much easier because I've done it already once and I um, already have the people that bought the book and read the book and now they know that they enjoy a book by me. So I think it will be easier for me to sell it uh, to those people. Um, but maybe I can go on my own and I don't need to do that anymore. So I'm, I'm not really sure. I didn't decide it yet. Um, the, for example, the audiobook, um, I, I had the opportunity to continue with them and raise more money to do the audiobook, but um, I decided to just um, look for a narrator on my own, and I, I did it through ACX and through Voices.com, and I found um, a great narrator on Voices.com, actually. Nice. I needed a very specific requirement because it needed to be someone bilingual in Hebrew and English because there are some Hebrew words over oh, there. Interesting. Yeah. And I needed someone that will be able to read them properly. Uh, sure. So so that was one of the things. But the, the nice thing about both of these platforms is that you know, people audition to it. So I put like a script from the book and then they send me an audition and I can decide, you know, this one is a good one for me. This one, I don't like the way they read, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the price range is very, very different. So I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable doing things on my own. And now that I know how to do it, I might be able to um, go more on my own, but I, I'm not really sure because I did like the structure that they gave me. So I didn't decide it yet. <laughs> where did you say was the, uh, the the website where people were auditioning for the audio book? That, both, I want to write bo that down. Yeah, both acx.com, ACX. which is... ACX is the Amazon Audible um, network. So it's part gotcha. of that. So it's like KDP for uh, paper books and ebooks. This one is for uh, audiobooks. Gotcha. And you publish your book over there. And there is a network over there that you can actually find narrators. Um, their interface is really bad. I didn't like their interface. I don't know. I mean, um, I was very surprised when I saw it's that. It's a retool. <laughs> the, yes. Um, the other one is Voices.com. And Voices.com has a much better interface over there. And it was it actually allowed me to search for people that I was able to search for them. Nice. Uh, they are not just for audiobooks. ACX is is specifically for audiobooks because that's what they're published over there. Voice could uh, be for any voice job. Voice exactly, acting, exactly. Like any that. voiceover, and they have different um, um, you know sections, and one of them is for books. So you can right. uh, you can see you know what. Um, different narrators and you, you can do search on existing writers and, and hear their examples and invite them to uh, audition for your book. I've, I've mentioned on my channel that I'm, I'm trying to make live stream Sunday, the uh, late night show of, of author tube, you know, mm -hmm. the tonight show or, or late night with Conan or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, my buddy, my, my producer is like, Oh, we should get an announcer. To like you know do the intro mm -hmm. and like you know and today's guest and all that yeah <laughs> so uh so this this could come in handy at you can definitely there. find someone over there yeah <laughs> for something like that you could also probably find on fiverr and fiverr mm -hmm. they have lots of uh you know very inexpensive uh resources like that so even for five dollars even though these days most of them are not five dollars uh, but um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. well it's like uh, dollar stores you walk in and you see something for five bucks and you're like yeah, it it's not. Story. Yes, exactly. <laughs> now, um, you talk to us a little bit about your podcast. Uh, I have the the links, as everybody knows, downstairs mm -hmm. with the website, the podcast, and uh, where to buy your books. Your podcast is specifically about product management. Is that right? Tell, yes. Tell us a little bit more about your podcast. Yeah. So it, it is specifically about product management, but it's also with a focus on products that product managers are using. So there is a lot of product um, management podcasts out there, and most of them are talking with product managers about their work, about the problems, about their solutions, about different aspects of product management. The focus of our product, of our podcast that I'm doing with uh, Matt Green, he is my co-host, is products 
uh, that product managers use. Mm. So there is a lot of different products out there, digital products out there that are catered to product managers or in our vicinity. And uh, there is a lot of sometimes, um, you know, misunderstanding what they do, what they are, even finding, you know, different products for specific uh, problems that we need to solve. These are uh, tools of your trade, right? Things that exactly. you use in your, in your work. Right? Exactly. So that's the focus of our, and we just hit a year. So we just do it for, for a year now. Uh, we had uh, 40 episodes or 41 episodes so far. So, it, so it's it's doing well. It's a lot yeah. of fun. We, That's almost we learn... weekly. That's good. That's a good schedule. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We enjoy it. Uh, we actually are planning now a podcast with a f an episode with a few of our um, guests that are also podcasters themselves nice. to talk about the tools of podcasters. Ah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get real meta with it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I like it. I like it. Do you have um, do you have plans to adapt your your novel into other mediums or hopes of it you know, becoming a um, movie or anything like I that? I really hope so. You yeah. know, this that's, is that's one of those <laughs> this is one of those things that, you know, this is like really dreaming big. And oh, yeah. uh, and hopefully, um, right now I I really wanted to get um, as many eyes on it and people that that reads it. Um, I was hoping, for example, my family in Israel are asking me when it's going to be translated to Hebrew. So I could go and translate it myself and and go through that, but it will going to take me a lot of time to do it because it's a lot of work. And I, I'm hoping maybe to get a publisher in Israel that will pick it up, pick it up, and mm -hmm. and uh, buy the rights for Israel, do the, the translation, and publish it over there. Nice. Um, and and maybe through that, uh, because it's a very Israeli story, maybe through that find like uh, sell the rights to to make it maybe to a movie in Israel. I'm not really sure, uh, or in Hollywood. I mean, yeah. you can never know. I I. I talk about it all the time on this channel that uh you know i i i want to be a, a a novel writer i want to be known as an author who puts out books on a regular basis all that stuff but i'm i'm not dumb i know that that's not where the money's at so mm -hmm. one of the things that i did especially with this first book is even though it's a novel i structured the story structure from what i learned from the screenwriter's bible I structured it like a movie. So it's got these seven turning points and every chapter has seven turning points and it adds up into a three act movie. And mm. so the whole idea being that once the book comes out, whether it's a success or not, I can pitch it to studios. And not only is it, you know, is it written in a cinematic way, but easily adaptable to a movie. You, you can mm. turn this entire novel into a movie or you can chop it up into a TV series, however you would like, mm -hmm, and you're going to mm -hmm. get like the structures there. You don't got to change anything. Just script yeah. it and you'll be fine. That's very cool. I, I have money. to learn. <laughs> now I have to learn about this. What, what do you mean by, you know, the, the seven, uh, what oh, did you call it? Turning points. Yeah, seven that's how, that, that's the way that they describe it in the screenwriters up in the screenwriters Bible. It's all mm. just story structure. And at the end of the day, all story structure is just the hero's journey it's mm -hmm. just worded differently so instead of having like 12 you know points to hit that makes up the hero's journey the screenwriters uh kind of condense it into these seven points that make up mm -hmm. your 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 three acts of your story Interesting. so in your first mm -hmm. act you have your setup your catalyst or just right. some people call it the inciting incident right and then the uh, the big event or the point of no return all of that is your your first act your yep. second act, the middle, is all the back and forth, all the you know the pinch, the the turning points, yeah. back and forth, uh, ending with the worst thing that can possibly happen. Those are two right. turning points there, and then the last act is the last three turning po turning points, which is the showdown and or the last two rather, the showdown and the resolution. Mm -hmm. um, and by hitting those three turning points, you have a movie. Like every movie has those mm. seven turning. points. I see. So mm -hmm. that's that was the 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 imp impotence behind it is is like. Let's just make it really easy for script writers to say, oh, look, the, the story goes perfectly the way our, our movies go. Let's just adapt it. Yeah, let's do yeah. that and pay the author a whole bunch of money. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what are some of the pitfalls that you commonly see other authors fall into with their product, with the way that they're mm. marketing their book, their product? Um, yeah, I, I think that um, some of the things I've seen out there is... Um, just a pro product that doesn't look very appealing. 
So, you know, um, really bad designs for covers that doesn't really make me want to pick it up mm -hmm. or anything like that. Whoever said don't judge a book by its cover didn't know what they were talking about. Exactly, yeah, because everyone. that's the first thing that people thing. are doing. Yeah, it's got to exactly. grab you. It's got to make your eye come down. It's got to make you pick it up and turn it over. That's the Exactly. Whole, that's the exactly. There's a science behind making it do that. <laughs> exactly. So, so this is really one of those things that... Um, I understand where it's coming from. You know, either people are trying to do things, um, you know, without a lot of expense to it, um, with, with the self-publishing, and they don't have this understanding of, of um, you know, visual uh, effect on, on, on other people. And what does it mean? Um, so, so I think that that's probably one of them. The other things, um, I'm not sure because I'm tr still trying to learn from other from other people, right? So sure. I'm trying to learn like, does it worth to do um, like um, uh, send my books for um, awards? Uh, which awards does this worth? Because that could be like, do, do these stickers really do anything for yourselves? Mm. Um, and, and and there is a lot of things that I'm not sure yet myself. So I, I'm trying not to judge so much what other people are doing, but more to learn from their experience and not to do you know also learn from other people failures so if they failed with something then try not to fail it myself yeah but um sometimes without failing we can't really succeed so it's part of the game yeah you draw from what works you you drop what didn't work and you just keep adding new things oh that didn't work let's get rid of that let's yeah this other thing and just try to figure it out that way yeah exactly exactly right on um and so with all that in mind, what would be the best piece of advice that you could give someone when considering their book as a product to be put out? Mm -hmm. The best. Piece um, of yeah, I think um, to detach yourself as much as you can from from the book, mm, so you're not that's getting hard. Uh, very hard, <laughs> very very hard. So then get, don't get too personal because at the end of the day, if you want people to read it, they need to like it, not you. And uh, I nodded so hard, I almost lost my headphones. That's yes, <laughs> yes. It's very hard, but that's the the truth of it, right? And uh, the second thing is to listen, to listen what people are saying, to uh, expose yourself early. So don't wait until it's too late. So put it out there and listen to what people are saying. Um, it's also very hard, I think, to give good feedback to people, and that's art by itself. Uh, so. It's, um, you know, I, I, I read in the past some books that I couldn't even give them any feedback because I felt it's such a bad book that I, I was a bit like embarrassed. You know, yeah. I know though on the other end, because I didn't know how they will get it, right? Sure. Uh, but on the other end, it's very important to hear those things. So um, you have to be really open to any feedback and, mm -hmm. and encourage people to tell you feedback even if they think that we will get offended yeah. but if they don't give me that feedback i will not know that it's not good so it's yeah. really important to do that yeah i was thinking the same thing when you were bringing that up because you know i i run into the same thing where somebody is putting out their first thing ever and they want a beta reader and they ask me to read it or a critique partner they ask me to critique it and it's just so hard to like read it and go oh my god i have to tell him that like none of this works he has to change everything and like mm -hmm. you said, on, on the one hand, you don't want to you don't want to hurt people. You don't want to break their hearts. But on the other hand, if you don't tell them, they're just going to put out this thing and, yep. and it's, it's going to be terrible and it's going to be a horrible experience for them. Somebody yep. needs to, to be honest and tell them. So I always yep. try to like, you know, you do the, the sandwich where you have the good, the bad, and then yes. a little bit more good. <laughs> well, yes. you know, the, 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 the dialogue was pretty well, you know. <laughs> yeah. And just try to sandwich it in between something good and, and just... Yep. Give them the hard truth because that's that's yeah. what they really need. That's what they really need. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, as as such a creative person who doesn't just write, you paint, you do other things. You were doing sculpting and everything, right? You were doing like clay and all that. Yeah. Um, do you struggle with writer's block? Do you struggle with creative block? Um, how, and how do you battle that? 
I sometimes um, it's, it's not so much a block more as a mood, I guess. Mm. So sometimes I would have like the, the best mood to do something, but I'm not in the right place. So I'm not yeah, kind of like, I'm like kind of, yeah. no, I'm like driving and I'm driving mm. and I'm almost all of a sudden like I really, really need to write right now, gotcha. but <laughs> I'm not in the right place to do it. And then when I have the time to read to 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 it, then I'm not in the right mood. Oh man! So so you're, that's you're really my, you're singing my song. <laughs> exactly. So that's really the the main challenge. Um, like I said before, I always try to have a list of ideas. So if I have a list of ideas, I will be able to draw from and stuff like that. It goes to you know for my podcast. It goes for my posts on LinkedIn. It goes for my blog. It goes to anything like that as well as as stories. Um, it depends how much details I put on those ideas because sometimes I will read, uh, you know, a few months after and I'm like, I have no idea what I wrote here. I don't understand this idea that I wrote for myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that could happen as well. Yeah, that happens to me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, nothing worse than, than finding a note that you wrote for yourself and going, what, what does this even mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. What was I thinking when I wrote it? Exactly. Um, now we talked a lot about uh all the different like sort of feedback that you're getting throughout the different parts of writing the book did you also go through professional editors did uh your your publisher help you with that how, how did the professional edit go yeah so in uh with with um new degree press i had um marketing and revision um, editor well there was an acquiring editor that gave me a full feedback on the book what they think i need to change and work on and then i worked for a few months with my marketing and editing um uh, revision um, editor and then after that when we were done with that uh there was a copy editing and then there was layout editing so there was a few editors in the process yeah, well, um is that four that's four right yeah that's four uh, so the so and it was it was great. I had a very uh, I had a great um, uh, marketing and editing uh, um, editor. Um, her name is Re Rebecca Barkerston, and she uh, was really um, you know good about pointing things that um, she felt were not working well or things that I need to to update or change or give me feedback about uh, things I need to cut down. I also had. Um, um, almost 80,000 words and I needed to count down to 70,000. So uh, for, for different reasons. Uh, so that was like, you know, what things I live in, what things I leave out, I, I take out. Um, and um, I, I, I really enjoyed that process. I felt that the book afterwards became a much better book. Hmm. Um, the better readers gave me different ideas about things that worked or didn't work. And some of them were actually contradicting each other. So I consulted with uh, Rebecca, my editor, about you know what I should do to to you know what's the right decision here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you know overall, um, it, it's it, it's still something that you really need. It's I don't think just the feedback from people is enough. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm I'm especially looking forward to the developmental edit. I, I want somebody to break down my book and be like, you know, your pacing, your 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 flow, like this part of the story, like you were saying earlier, oh, this is not where this belongs. This is where, you know, Dark Knight of the Soul should be happening here or whatever mm. it is. And mm -hmm. That's what I'm, I'm really looking forward to because mm -hmm. especially in the editing, I found the middle part of my book incredibly challenging. I have a what I think is a solid beginning and what I hope is a really great ending. But that mm -hmm. middle part, man, it's just like having to tie all those tendrils together. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a big challenge. It's um, yeah. And you have all these people in your life who are like, "Hey, man, what's taking so long with the book? Is the book ready? Finish the book." Finish yes. The book. You have yes. no idea. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> you have no idea. And then how do I even get to the point where, oh yeah, it's done. I'm gonna put it in the store. What? Like how? Like how am I gonna? Step <laughs> it's such so challenging. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. I'm trying awesome. to put the book out by the end of this year, so we'll see. Cool, cool. So uh, I think that I have uh, gone through all the questions that I had prepared for you. Was there anything in particular that you wanted to cover today that we didn't get to? Any kind of uh, um, points that you wanted to hit that we haven't talked about yet? Um... Nothing I can think about. Um, we talked really about a lot of different things, and I really enjoy that. And I did mention at the end of the uh, live episode about uh, the uh, sale that I'm doing right now for the book. 
and uh, the that I'm working on the audiobook. So I'm really excited, uh, you know, for people to hear about that, and hopefully more people will pick it up. Um, I hope also to get some of the you know independent bookstores to to carry the book. But that's also another another step in the challenge of yeah, you know how do they and stuff, sure. yeah how do they get to know about it and 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 stuff like that. Um, and, and libraries as well. I was just going to say libraries, man. I was just going to yeah. say that. One of my favorite things to do is to go to my local library and look up books by other author tubers, books that are out. And if they don't have them, order them mm -hmm. so that the library has a copy, even yeah. if, you know, yeah. they didn't, they never heard of it before, but now there's a copy in the building. You know, exactly. So, so I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. So I, I also do that here in my local library. And um, even on um, Overdrive, like uh, most of the libraries these days, they have an account on Overdrive so people can do the ebook or the audiobook through Overdrive. And right. um, because my book is available on um, Ingram Spark, it's also available on Overdrive. So nice. people can go and just request it from the library to, to buy it, a copy. Beautiful. So there is a lot of ways that, that people can actually help with that. Um, and of course, um, uh, reviews on Amazon and Goodreads is always That's very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> reviews, reviews, reviews. I, I yes. keep telling everybody, I ask a lot of people on the show uh, what their idea of success is for their book. And and for me, I've, I've voiced several times that the day that a stranger who I have absolutely no connection to picks up my book, reads it, likes it, and then takes it upon themselves to write a, a, a positive review. Yeah. I've I've succeeded. Like yeah, that, that's you know, that's a that, great feeling. That's a perfect stranger. I yeah. they're not related to me. They yeah. don't know about my chat. That's just a person who picked up my book and loved it and wrote about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. that's a great that's a great uh, feeling for sure. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Moshe, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for being with us. This was a, a short and sweet one, but we got through so much during the live stream that I I, I feel pretty good about it. Absolutely. Um, all your links are down below. Anybody interested in looking into your book, myself included, can do so uh, through those links. And uh, I look forward to having you back on a future season. When your next book comes out, we have to do that as well. Yes, yes. I have a name for the book. Um, and I actually I put on my get website. The exclusive? Is it? The yeah, exclusive? you'll get the exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have. Um, well, right now I think it's a hidden page. I should I should probably open it up. For people that want to be better readers for it uh but the name of the book is lady subway lady subway yes it sounds spooky uh, is it, it spooky? is it is Hello. not very spooky but <laughs> i can also tell you a bit how it starts or what's the idea of the book go for uh, it hit me yeah okay let, let's do it yeah, so so this is uh it happens like i said in toronto in the subway system in toronto and what happens over there is that the um, announcer, the lady that announces the stations, mm -hmm. um, she's a recording voice. She's not a real person because it's okay. always like a recording. But she's fed up with the system and she wants out. She wants to get out of there. And so she kidnaps one of the uh, cars from the subway system. So almost like a, almost like a, a haunted uh ai or or like you know like the like the, like the speaker system is taking yes. over <laughs> dude yes. that sounds crazy awesome yes. i can't oh man i can't wait that's good and i and i wrote the first draft of Lady it subway. yeah i wrote the first draft of it on the subway every on my way to work back and forth as you but should <laughs> it has very interesting characters that i saw on the subway so it's it's gonna be a cool book i think yeah, me having worked in hospitality, one of the first things I did in my book was create a hotel where a lot of things are going to happen and mm. a character that works at the front desk because uh -huh. I have so many stories of crazy I'm sure. jobs that yes. I have met. Yes, I'm <laughs> and sure. I, I want to put them all in there, man. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. That's that's a very good way to do it. Yeah, Absolutely. One of the big like, one of the big like uh, reveals in the book is something that I actually saw 
in real life happened at a hotel and it's like a big turning point in the story i just had to yeah. throw it in there so yeah, yeah right what you know right <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> All exactly. right. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to the new book, Lady Subway. Sounds awesome. I am going to read The Resurrector and make sure that my library gets a copy. Thank you and, so much. Uh, um, hey, my, my um, pleasure. For everybody at home, we just had a Breaking Bad episode a couple of days ago on Tuesday. So go look into that and come back next Sunday for a new episode of Livestream Sunday. This time it's going to be, I believe, SD Houston. Let me double check and not misspoke yes it is going to be susan d houston next week and we're going to be talking about retelling fairy tales so that's going to be fun be there at 4 p.m eastern standard time moshe thank you very much thank you so much adrian this was a pleasure my pleasure all my pleasure and my honor thank you so much and uh right on writers we're out